Good morning and welcome to Seven Ways Play in Burnham Beaches. Over the next few days I'm going to be excavating a trench here across the Iron Age hill fort at Seven Ways Plain, um, across the earthworks and the ditch with the hope to get some dating information and learn a bit more about the construction of the hill fort. But uh, before we get started on that, just a couple of words about the sorts of things we need to do before we begin an excavation like this. Um, it's just about nine o'clock in the morning. Um, we've enclosed the uh, trench site in some fencing to keep our neighbours the cows off of it. This is um, grazed woodland. They've been very curious and perhaps they'll make an appearance again this morning. Um, but we also need to look after the site, not just from a heritage point of view. This is a scheduled monument, which means that it's protected by Historic England. But it's also a triple SI, which means it has uh, protection from Natural England as well. And we need to make sure that we don't disrupt the habitat. So the first thing that I did this morning was spray all the tools, my boots, everything that's coming onto the site with uh, bioprotectant so that I'm not bringing any unintentional friends from other sites or even from places I've visited in the last week. Um, it's a way to keep it biosecure. The other thing we want to do is make sure that the spoil, the, the, the dirt that we dig out of the trench, um, when it comes up and goes here on the spoil heap behind me, we want to make sure that we don't mix soils around from different contexts. And that might seem a, a bit silly, but there are invertebrates and tiny mollusks, uh, land snails, a variety of things that have very um, uh, specific environments in which they live, for instance, in the silt in the bottom of this Iron Age ditch. Um, and we want to make sure that that doesn't spread around to other areas of the site. So you can see behind me, we've laid down tarpaulin and some boards. And the boards are actually to make it easier to shovel that spoil back off at the end of the dig when uh, you'll have an exciting report on how to backfill a trench. Um, so with that almost ready to go, the next thing I will be doing is laying out the string that measures the 14 meter long trench and uh, I'll check back in with you when we're ready to start digging. Right, well the um, trench is now marked out. Hopefully you can see the parallel lines of a 1.2 meter trench that stretches about 14 meters in length with the idea encompassing the counter scarp, which is this sort of rise here, the actual ditch of the enclosure and the rampart or the earthwork which is created out of the arisings of this ditch and forms the the main superstructure of the enclosure itself. Um, 14 meters is an awful lot of material to shift um, but uh, hopefully it won't be two or three meters deep. Um, the first step now is to clear the interior of the trench, the, the bit that we're going to excavate um, of all the debris. So there's quite a few twigs and branches that have come down here. There's bits and sprigs of holly and bramble sticking out and of course all these leaves. So I'm going to be taking the unusual step of sweeping my trench before I begin. And it's always important to have a really nice tidy trench. The complication is we have to work around some of the roots of these trees. Um, all of these trees are protected so it's a matter of excavating around the root, preserving them and keeping them damp and happy uh, for the week that they will be exposed to the elements. Um, right, I'll check in after the trench is swept. Well, hopefully you can see now that um, the trench is a little bit more established. You can see bare earth where we're going to start digging. Um, so basically, it's time to crack on. Right, well, it's midday and here's where we've got to. Um, as you can see, the trench is now quite well established uh, between the white lines and in the counterscarp part here, you can see that uh, I'm down to gravel and we've still got some pesky holly leaves that will need uh, removing root and shoot. Um, but other, other roots will be working around. And you can see here I've already made a few rooty friends that we'll have to uh, look after and protect. These obviously go to the larger trees and we don't want to disrupt them. But uh, hopefully what you can also see here in the soil is the difference between the light and dark. So as we come down the slope of the counterscarp, and I haven't yet begun to excavate in the ditch, but just cleared off the top of it, and you can see the difference between the darker soil and that lighter patch, that's actually what's left of some sort of burrowing animal um, uh, shelter. So that's part of a a rabbit run or something smaller um, and you can see how the, the material that they will have drug into that now unused burrow um, is really much different than the darker silts that make up the fill of the ditch. 
And as we move along, I've gone to the other side, to the inner bank of the enclosure. Here you can see, once again, stripping off the uh, overburden of, of the uh, material that's built up on the top, the grasses, and have come down onto, uh, again, a gravelly, sandy matrix, but much darker. So there's been good progress today. Um, have got down to this bright orange uh, flinty clay, which is the level I was looking for. This is what comprises the earthwork. So uh, apart from the roots, which we need to work around tomorrow, uh, it should be fairly straightforward to take this block down to the level uh, we need to get to. Now I'm just going to walk us over to the other side of the trench and we'll look at the main earthwork. Right, here we are up on the inner rampart of the trench and hopefully you can also see here that there's a difference between the brighter orangey bits down there, which is again that, that clay flinty core of the rampart. And as we come back up here onto the top of the rampart, you can see it's very much darker. And this is the bit that has been contaminated, if you like, by the dump of coal and ash and coke um, bits of metal working that are a, uh, a legacy of the World War II activity uh, on this site. Uh, but we still are down onto gravelly bits here, so the uh, core of the, of the earthwork is not far away. So that will be a project for tomorrow as well. So it may seem to be sort of slow going, we're only centimetres below the surface, but the first day is always tricky, um, particularly figuring out where the roots are, how the logistics of moving around the site is going to work and what the characteristics of the stratigraphy is. Um, I think I'm very pleased with today's uh, level of progress and uh, certainly am pleased with the find that came up uh, right towards the end of the day. So a little surprise for you coming up. Well, that's about all for me for today. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow. It's been fantastic talking to people on the site. Probably about 50 people come through the site today. Um, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.